Lynching was part of a systematized reign of terror that was used to maintain the power whites had over blacks, writes Philip Dre in his book, At the Hands of Persons Unknown. Drawing on records held at the Tuskegee Institute, Dre argues that from 1882 until 1952, not a single year passed without a recorded lynching somewhere in the United States. Folks are buying gasoline and motor oil, burning it to a crisp, being rid of her body with bullets. Many stories are passed from one generation to the next, but over time, stories fade. Tonight, local citizens are determined to keep one particular story alive. Eyewitness News reporter Greg Goldberg brings us the nearly 100-year-old tale of Mary Turner. A warning, some of these descriptions are graphic. The Mary Turner case is one of the darkest in the history of this country. Some people have forgotten it. Some don't even know about it. After 90 some years, it's about time for, for something to be said. It was 1918 in Brooks County, Georgia. A white plantation owner beat one of his black workers. The worker then killed him. Historians say it set off a week-long killing spree of at least 13 African Americans. 96 years ago this month, Mary Turner was 21 years old and 8 months pregnant. And they took her to a tree. They tied her ankles around a limb of that tree. And then they took a knife and cut open her stomach. And when the baby fell to the ground, one of the men took the heel of his boot and crushed its head until it was dead. Uh, they soaked the body in gasoline and motor oil, burned it to a crisp, then riddled her body with bullets. And uh, they say they the mob members um, marked her grave with a whiskey bottle. This historical marker is the only public display in Brooks County that memorializes the events of that week. It's called Mary Turner and the Lynching Rampage. The marker stands at Folsom's Bridge over Little River between Barney and Hiram. Somewhere in these woods is the tree where historians say Mary Turner was lynched. You won't be able to find the story in any libraries or museums in South Georgia. Generally, the story is only known through word of mouth. I can understand that. If it happened, it should be read about and, and known about. James Turner is a relative of Mary. He knows the story from listening to his father, who was born the same year she died. Jeremy Henry is a relative of Willhead, another man who was killed in the week-long rampage. He's led his own journey to find out what happened. A lot of them just now really kind of coming forth with it, but some of those older people that, that may have heard it hands-on from their parents have kind of died off. At least 13 people were killed, including Mary Turner's husband, Hayes Turner. Many black people protested to the sheriff, but records show he didn't respond. The newspaper headlines read, Her talk enraged them. Mary Turner taken to Folsom's Bridge and hanged. Sidney Johnson, the man who killed the plantation owner, was later found in Valdosta on South Troop Street, where he was shot and killed. It's reported a crowd of 700 watched as a rope was tied around the neck of his dead body and then dragged 16 miles from Valdosta to Mormon. Nearly 100 years later, these events are long over, but there are still some who are determined never to forget. And now they want us to forget. They never ask the Jews to forget what happened to them, and the Jews won't let those who were responsible forget it. In Brooks County, Georgia, Greg Goldberg, WCTV Eyewitness News. More than 500 people fled Brooks and Lowndes County shortly after the Rampage Week. Mary Turner is memorialized at a museum exhibit in Baltimore. Mike McCall has your midweek forecast coming up right after this break, and we also have your wacky weather. Greetings. This is the Get Old Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rise, and I'm in Brooks County, Georgia. 
This is a historic marker. Mary Turner and the lynching rampage of 1918. This monument, memorial, if you will, was erected by concerned citizens here in Brooks County, Valdosta, Lyons County, Brooks County. And believe it or not, Valdosta State University, Professor Mark George, did a lot of the work to ensure that this history is preserved. Greeting once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press that I'm George Boston Rines. And I'm standing in front of the Webb Miller Community Church in Hehara, Georgia. As you know, the Mary Turner Project has been putting on and sponsoring a commemoration service for the people that were murdered in 1918 here in Brooks and Lowndes County, Georgia. Even before the Mary Project, Mary Turner Project began, I'm asking you to go to kvci.blogspot.com and Google Mary Turner. There was not much being said about the Mary Turner Project here in South Georgia. And I just want you to review the historical facts about what has taken place here in Valdosta, Lyons County, and Brooks County, Georgia. We commend the Mary Turner Project under the leadership of Professor Mark George from Valdosta State University, a very outstanding human being that I met years ago when I had New Mind Material and Fashion Music for 14 years after retiring from the United States Armed Forces. I later, later met Harry Santa, a doctor at BSU, another Professor Moyet, and other professors, and I still meet with some of them at their homes now. But I just want to say that we must thank the Mary Turner family for carrying on the memory of a person who refused to just give up and quit after white mob members murdered her husband. You will find every event here in Lowndes County, Brooks County, concerning the Mary Turner Commemoration Service on YouTube and on kvci.blogspot.com. Today, May the 16th, is no different from many other events we have had here. It's just like when I just left Morrisport Bridge last month. It's much like Equipment 10 plus 2, the beginning of the Kendrick Johnson's case. We do this for no other reason than to keep you informed. <laughs> This is at the Mayor Turner Memorial today, and we have a few family members here, and I'm just gonna go from one. What's your name? Mary. Okay, what's your name? Uh -huh. Okay, what's your name? Uh -huh. What's your relationship, Mary Turner? Great, Randall. Okay. And what's your name, Mom? Uh, and what's your name? Les Grant. What's your name? Devon Gant. And what's your name? Mary Cavill. It is so important that we remember our history not only remembering it, but archiving it. And this motorcade is in commemoration of Mary Turner, lynching victims of May 1918, Will Head, J. 
Julius Jones, Hayes Turner, the husband of Mary Turner, Eugene Rice. It says two unidentified persons, Shine Raleigh, Simon Schumann, Sidney Johnson. And of course, we must remember the other, we also recorded at 500 people, 500 people left this area after the murder of these black African-American people. And it's strange, this is a repeat of what we expect in South Georgia from time to time. We expect no news media coverage in the black African-American communities. We have been saying that for a long time and we see that is true until this very day. So we're going to continue to do what we do because it must be done. Once again, this is the site of the Mary Turner historic marker that was placed here years ago. And of course, we have already reported that there are bullet holes in the marker. But that's all a part of the experience of our history. Not only black people, that is the history of America. And I wanna thank once again, Professor Mark George and all those people, Rogers, and all who participated in keeping this alive. It's not a black or white thing, it's a right thing. And we must always, always remember the white right people that stood for what was right in God's world. And this is what's gonna make the difference. And this is what's gonna make America stand out. It's when we go beyond skin color and begin to look at what is right, not only for Asians or Africans, but for all of God's created beings. We may not see our reverends. We may not see our pastors here. We may not see our imams. We may not see the sheikhs, but we believe that those who have a mindset for right and righteousness will do what is right in God's world. Once again, this is the site of the Mary Turner historic marker that was placed here years ago. And of course, we have already reported that there are bullet holes in the marker. But that's all a part of the experience of our history. Not only black people, that is the history of America. And I wanna thank once again, Professor Mark George, and all those people, Rogers, and all who participated in keeping this alive. It's not a black or white thing, it's a right thing. And we must always, always remember the white right people that stood for what was right in God's world. And this is what's gonna make the difference, and this is what's gonna make America stand out. It's when we go beyond skin color and begin to look at what is right, not only for Asians or Africans, but for all of God's created beings. We may not see our reverends. We may not see our pastors here. We may not see our imams. We may not see the sheikhs, but we believe that those who have a mindset for right and righteousness will do what is right in God's world.
and uh, as we read the name, someone from the Mary Turner Project will ring a bell that symbolizes the life of those that we will remember. And the first name of the list is actually my great uncle on my mother's side, Mr. Will Head. Julius Jones. Hayes Turner. Mary Turner as head of Graham. Eugene Rice. There were two unidentified persons. Chime Raleigh. Simon Schumann. And Sydney Johnson. Reverend Floyd Rose uh, had to attend a funeral service today and is not able to attend this portion. Uh, but instead, I want to make sure that we all know who the family members are. So standing next to me again is Audrey, and she's the great granddaughter. And we have Celeste Grant, who is also a great granddaughter of uh, Aunt Mary. And then we have two great grandsons, Mr. Nathaniel Grant from Miami, Florida, by way of Barney. And his uh, oldest brother, Mr. Willie Grant, where's, as we know him as Peanut. Uh, he's kind of tired of right now. But, uh, so just so that we know, we also, the eldest surviving member on the ground side is my great aunt, Frances Burgess. This time, we're going to have a, a song by my cousin on my mother's side, uh, one of the descendants of Will Head, Judge Head, Mr. Jeremy Henry. Oh, he's a okay. okay, so Jeremy also had the attendance. Jeremy is an, uh, a student at Morehouse, and one of his Morehouse brothers was uh, murdered this week, uh, well, earlier this week, and the funeral is today, so he's going to pay respect to that young man who would have graduated today and off to med school, but it's filled with today. Okay. Mr. Hall, Robert Hall? Yes, I'm here. Okay, Mr. Hall will gladly fill in the shoes for Mr. Henry and sing us a song and then we'll uh, depart. Yeah, I'm sorry, but before we depart, uh, we have a family member who's a, an expert photographer who wants to get a, a photo shoot of the family in front of the marker before we actually leave. The song that I'm going to sing at this time, the change is going to come. Oh, all right. <laughs> I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, and just like the river, I've been a running ever since. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. It's been too hard living, but I'm afraid to die. I don't know what's up there beyond the sky. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know. A change gonna come, oh yes it will. Then I go to my brother, and I say, brother, help me please. But he winds up knocking me right down on my knees. times when I thought I couldn't last for long, but now I feel like I'm able to 
carry on. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Oh, yes, it will. Thank God for the little children who are carrying on the memory. I mean, thank you very much. Thank you very much. As we depart. All right, my beautiful brother. Y'all take care right, now. Take care. Thank you. God bless. Yes, go to Boston GBR. Huh? Y'all leave it. Can I get your contact information? Boston GBR. 229. All right now. 251. All right now. All right. 29251. 8645. Your name again? George. 8645. No, no. Uh, look. Boston GBR. I got a post. Boston okay. GBR, in the inner circle. GBR. Boston GBR. Got it. Thank you. What's your name, man? Look here. Wait, wait, hold on a minute. Wait, wait, wait. for 2014 to an end. But the struggle really began after this gathering. For we also have here in Brooks County the equipment 10 plus two. Lula Smart just had a second mistrial. The black mayors in the state of Georgia, that is in Meigs, Dawson, Georgia, Gordon, Georgia. We also have the Kendrick Johnson's death at Lyons County High School. We also have me under a nearly 365-day criminal trespass warning by persons unknown, yet I was wrongfully denied my rights under the Constitution of the state of Georgia and the United States of America. We also have in Lyons County 31 jail deaths that nobody talked about. 32 because a couple of weeks ago they found another young man dead in the jail. We also have the Moores Fort Bridge. We have appealed unto Eric Holder of the Justice Department by order of Reverend Joseph Lowry, Tyrone Brooks, Mostella of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, as well as Charles Steele, Senator and President of SCLC. We are also reaching out on behalf of the 14-year-old girl that was hogtied by Lyons County Sheriff Deputy on May 
the 24th, 2013. And nothing, but nothing has been done about it in terms of news media coverage. Isn't it strange today, with all of these people, no news media, no television, isn't that something? But the ghetto free press is here, and we're going to report this like we always report it. They don't have to report us. You got me to do it. We got other people who got their iPhones and their asteroids. They are recording their own history. They, we refuse to be ignored in the 21st century. So we can no longer look for MSNBC, CBS, and ABC to report historic information to the black African-American community, as you can see, the white right community. Our young people, we're going to encourage you to use your cell phones. You can, report, you can record the police as well. Just stand your ground from so many feet. It has been proven in the, over and over in the courts that you can re record any public official in the performance of their duties. You don't have to guess that. You heard it from the YouTube. And we do it because you have a right to know. Now, if this event had not been recorded and placed on this channel, what you are listening to would have been like a tree falling in the forest. Then they'll tell you the tree didn't fall, and then they'll tell you that the forest don't exist. Yet it was our children who were sitting beneath the tree in the forest, and we know the forest failed. So just because mainstream media don't report our story, guess what? That's why I'm here, to get on free press. Bye-bye. We gone. Let it be, let it be, let it be, with fruit. 
this brings this year to a close concerning the Mary Turner lynching rampage of 1918. Just a few weeks ago, you saw me at the Moore's Fort Bridge. History must be maintained. All due respect to the family members. But I just want to say to all of the Mary Turner family, we think about the little baby that was ripped from her womb. And we meet once a year here. But are you involved in any civil rights organization that will bring about change for the children that are living today? Are you a registered voter? Did you vote in the early elections? For when you register to vote, you are indeed paying the greatest tribute that you can pay to these people that perished in 1918. When you stand up for justice, when you are willing to do what Mary Turner did for the good of other Americans, regardless of race, color, creed, or religious persuasion, when you can go beyond Christianity, when you can go beyond Judaism, when you can go beyond all of these, whether it be Islam on the WD side of the house or Louis Farrakhan side of the house or Shiite from the Islamic world or if you be an atheist, be the best of whatever you can be to bring about a greater world. United States of America didn't get to be the great nation that it is without all of us. And we are all precious in his sight. To the young girls, cover your bodies. To your young men, pull your pants up. Do you see any congressman walking around in Washington, D.C. with the pants down? We know you're trying to make a statement about your pain, about your suffering, about your discrimination, and how you're mistreated even by law enforcement, some of you. So we understand you're trying to make a statement, but be on the right side of making the right statement at the right time so you can be appreciated as the ancient builders of the pyramids in Africa. And let me clarify Africa once and for all, hopefully. They call us African-American. But do you not know that Africa is named after a white European general that murdered black people in the land of the burnt-faced people? The continent of Africa was not called Africa. We allow others to put labels on us. And therefore, we go deeper and deeper into a mysticism. And we are playing right into the hand of the Antichrist. So I want to close now by saying to you, I know it's about the Mary Turner death and the other 13 to 25 blacks that were murdered, as well as the white gentleman that was murdered because he worked blacks on his plantation and wouldn't pay them and is the root cause of all of this. All we ever wanted was equal justice under the law. Well, I know, I know, I know. Some people would not want me to mention all, some of the things that I've mentioned to you. But look, we are in this together. John Brown was a white man. Many white people, we call them white right people, suffered, bled, and died to help us, to help America along the way. Once again, today is about Mary Turner. But tomorrow, when you register to vote, it about, it'll be about you and your children. And whatever you do, my friends, don't let hate be the driving force behind your movement. Let's leave that up for others. 
Let's leave that up to others. Our ancestors always told us. Swing that shit at me. Yeah, swing that shit at me. Go ahead. Go ahead, tough guy. Come on, tough guy. To his legs. Yo, look at his legs. Why you look. doing that to his legs? Why y'all doing that to him? Y'all going down for sure. Yeah, you got a lawsuit. Got a lawsuit, black This nigga right here. I wish a nigga would touch me. Officer, beat him now. Yo, Black O, don't worry, Black. I got the whole shit on camera, baby. I got the whole shit on camera, baby. They can't lock me back. They can't lock me up. I know my rights. Don't worry, I got him. Excuse me. You say it as many times you want to say it, boss. I know my rights. Don't stop filming. I know. Yeah, I know. What up? You did the same thing to me. That niggas want to beat on people. Yeah, that's it. Everybody back up. Record that shit over there. Go. Yes, sir. Go. Don't touch me, please. I don't know why you touching me for. Don't touch me. Beat on somebody. 
Y'all tough as hell beating on niggas. Y'all tough as hell with them sticks. Somebody. Same motherfuckers that locked me up for a knife that they found on my wife and they locked me up. Now I got them on, on tape that they be harassing people. They just beat the nigga for no reason. Why is what does this case bother you so much? I mean, you've had a lot of people ask you to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. Why do you stay interested in it? Why? Yeah. Because I'm tired of. It. I'm tired of when you go through life, you live with lies or you live with people talking about things. I want it all over with. The racism. I mean, I've been on the street. And, you know, I told people I dated a black woman up there, and you can't get nothing. A white man goes around here and says he's dating a black woman or hanging around black people. You can't get no loan. You can't go to no bank, borrow money or nothing. They, they turn you down. You know, we have been long talked about this case. We know that, um, uh, how this case came about. To give you a little background, um, Mr. Malcolm, um, allegedly, and we, we know that to be the case, um, stabbed the gentleman, Mr. Hester, but it was rumored that uh, he had been sleeping with Mr. Malcolm's wife. And uh, so we know that uh, after this incident, Mr. Malcolm was arrested. Um, uh, three, not even three weeks later, he was, he was uh, bail was posted for him. Um, and this gentleman, his wife, uh, Mr. Dorsey and his wife were all taken to this Morris Ford Bridge, um, where they were brutally lynched, and uh, as you all stated in the beginning of the show, shot over 60 times. We know that there was a uh, grand jury that was impaneled. Um, over 50 suspects were of interest were interviewed, but no one, no one was ever uh, accused. No one was ever arrested. Um, and so we have this mass public lynching, one of the last mass public lynchings, one of the most egregious acts, and included in this is a World War II veteran. No one has ever been brought to justice in this case, and so we're so glad uh, that you all and other media outlets are taking a look at this case, and we continue to push for justice. Now, there was a—wasn't uh, there an Associated Press report of several years ago that claimed that there was some indication that the governor at the time, uh, Eugene Talmadge, had actually visited that particular town, spoken to the—spoken uh, to the brother of the, of the man who had been stabbed, and basically said, anybody who takes care of the African-American who was involved in this, they don't have to worry. Is that 
That, that's absolutely correct. And, and remember, during that time, Governor Tavich ran on the platform, segregation now, segregation forever. You know, and so he uh, was politically motivated and um, many would say empowered the people in this community to, to let them know it's OK. You know, African-American, black life don't matter. And so you're absolutely correct. He, uh, Governor Tamage, in his own right, sent a message to this county and to the state. So <clears throat> talk about Wayne Watson naming names and just who Wayne Watson is. Wayne Watson is a gentleman from Monroe, Georgia, um, Walton County, who had uh, been sought out by one of our people in the county. People had always said that there was no one alive, there was no one available that would be able to shed light on this case. Well, we're so glad that Mr. Watson was found, and we were able to bring our then president, uh, Ben Jealous, uh, to interview with Mr. Watson. Um, his interview was so compelling that initially we were just talking to him, but he began to name names and locations and people and places, and our president, Jealous, said, wait a minute. We need to get this on tape. This guy is talking about very compelling information that um, the FBI need to be aware of. Alan Cook, the DA, we're trying to find out who knew about it, nothing like that. And evidently, my attorney told somebody or told him. Because next thing I know, everybody in Walden County knew I was the one that knew about the KKK, who's alive. And people tried to bribe me. I've been to prison, a detention center. And they offered me money. Robert Mitchell offered me two hundred fifty thousand dollars to keep my mouth shut and walk away in '99. I told him I wouldn't do it. He said, "You'll be dead before you ever testify." Yeah, first of all, too, let me thank also State Representative Tyrone Brooks. I don't want to be on the show without giving him the credit due for uh, convening us in this case. So, Dr. King had been. Uh, informed about this case, Dr. King had made a commitment uh, that at, after he left Memphis, um, that he would be visiting Walton County. Mm -hmm. And so Dr. King never made it. You'll recall that uh, Dr. King was assassinated. Um, but Dr. King was always interested in, in this case and coming to Walton County to speak out on this injustice. And Herb Boyd, uh, talk about the significance of this case and why you got involved in a documentary on it. But it's really Keith Beauchamp's idea. You know, he had uh, put together the uh, untold story of Emmett Till, and it just pushed him more and more into the history of lynching. It's good to see that Brian Stevenson, you know, has brought out that study and connecting it up in terms of contextualizing 1946. He was a returning veteran gone off, you know, fought for this country to come home, virtually still in uniform, you know, when he's abducted, along with his wife, along with Roger Malcolm and Dorothy. She's seven months pregnant. So when we heard about that, Keith said, let's do this one. And the most powerful thing about his documentary is the reenactment that we do on that particular incident. <clears throat> And what did you discover at that time in terms of um, what has been investigated? Well, you know, and, and, and we were looking at uh, how the FBI, you know, would be involved in this situation because they had, uh, given the other cases we had worked on, had given us every indication that they were going to seriously pursue this situation. Um, Tyrone Brooks was very, very instrumental in helping us understand and un the background of the situation. but. I don't know. You know, it just kind of stalled at that point. Uh, we went on to other projects, and only recently, with it popping up in the news again, we have to go back and revisit and take a look again at the kind of research we did on that situation. Hmm. And DuBose, at this point, what are you calling for now? Well, we've um, uh, endorsed a letter last year and even this year uh, to the Senate Judiciary Committee. We, we want the Congress and the Senate, the U.S. Congress and the Senate, to take a look at this case, um, call for an investigation of this case. But keep in mind, um, in 2008, um, then Congressman John Lewis and uh, Senate um, uh, Christopher Dodd uh, 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 sponsored the Emmett Till bill, mm -hmm. which allocated resources for cold cases. Mm. It has never been fully funded. And so, one, we wanted to be fully funded to give the resources to the Federal Bureau of Investigation that they need. If that's the holdup, give them the money that they need that has already been voted on. Uh, and President Obama, can he can do that. And so we hope that 
people who are watching will join us in reaching out to your Congress or Senate and tell them uh, to communicate with Mr. Grassley, Chairman Grassley, um, to allow this case to be investigated and those responsible brought to justice. If we can take, if we can find Nazis in the United States who've committed atrocities, certainly we can find people in Walton County, Georgia. And there's an indication that there are still uh, several people who may have participated in uh, that are alive. We are convinced that, and we believe that the FBI is convinced, we hope that they move, that there are people still alive um, who were involved uh, in this case. There were over 200 people on that bridge. You couldn't tell me that all of them are dead now. Charlie Pepper. Charlie Pepper, I believe, knows more than what Charlie Pepper is saying. Okay. And, I, and I hope they continue to interview him. This brings this year to a close concerning the Mary Turner lynching rampage of 1918. Just a few weeks ago, you saw me at the Moore's Fort Bridge. History must be maintained. All due respect to the family members. But I just want to say to all of the Mary Turner family, we think about the little baby that was ripped from her womb. And we meet once a year here. But are you involved in any civil rights organization that will bring about change for the children that are living today? Are you a registered voter? Did you vote in the early elections? For when you register to vote, you are indeed paying the greatest tribute that you can pay to these people that perished in 1918. When you stand up for justice, when you are willing to do what Mary Turner did for the good of other Americans, regardless of race, color, creed, or religious persuasion, when you can go beyond Christianity, when you can go beyond Judaism, when you can go beyond all of these, whether it be Islam, on the WD side of the house, or Louis Farrakhan side of the house, or Shiite from the Islamic world, or if you be an atheist, be the best of whatever you can be to bring about a greater world. United States of America didn't get to be the great nation that it is without all of us. And we are all precious in his sight. To the young girls, cover your bodies. To your young men, pull your pants up. Do you see any congressmen walking around Washington, D.C. with the pants down? We know you're trying to make a statement about your pain, about your suffering, about your discrimination, and how you're mistreated even by law enforcement, some of you. So we understand you're trying to make a statement, but be on the right side or making the right statement at the right time so you can be appreciated as the ancient builders of the pyramids in Africa. And let me clarify Africa once and for all, hopefully. They call us African American, but do you not know that Africa is named after a white European general that murdered black people in the land of the burnt-faced people. The continent of Africa was not called Africa. We allow others to put labels on us, and therefore we go deeper and deeper into a mysticism. And we are playing right into the hand of the Antichrist. So I want to close now by saying to you, I know it's about the Mary Turner death and the other 13 to 25 blacks that were murdered, as well as the white gentleman that was murdered because he worked blacks on his plantation and wouldn't pay them and is the root cause 
of all of this, all we ever wanted was equal justice under the law. Well, I know, I know, I know. Some people would not want me to mention some of the things that I've mentioned to you. But look, we are in this together. John Brown was a white man. Many white people, we call them white right people, suffered, bled, and died to help us, to help America along the way. Once again, today is about Mary Turner. But tomorrow, when you register to vote, it about, it'll be about you and your children. And whatever you do, my friends, don't let hate be the driving force behind your movement. Let's leave that up for others. Let's leave that up to others. Our ancestors always told us